Hey guys, welcome to Fiction Fixation. Every week we're going to talk about a different book or movie. We're your host. I'm Courtney. And I'm Rose. Our story this week is a movie on Netflix called After. And it's based on a book by Anna Todd. Listen, let's, uh, let's get this out of the way right now. Mm-hmm. Courtney picks the movies and books that we read. I watch. do pick all the movies and books. Yeah, yeah, you do. What did you just make me watch? Okay, listen, I think the book's probably very different from the movie. Both of us being writers, I think we know how a lot of things could probably get like lost yeah. in the translation. I, I can definitely see, I can imagine it's probably a first person book. There's we're, we're probably missing a lot of her thoughts of the main character's yes. thoughts. However, I did I did enjoy this movie. I did too, actually. It starts off with Tessa, her boyfriend Noah, and her mom yeah. packing up and then taking her to college. I'm gonna tell you right away, I thought that the boyfriend was the brother. Yes. That was awkward. I didn't realize that that was her boyfriend until they literally kissed and I was like, okay, weird family. <laughs> it looks like looks like brothers using tongue, but all right. <laughs> My first impression of Noah, the boyfriend, is that he kind of reminds me of a wet noodle. A like, wet noodle. Wait, wait, like a pool noodle or? No, like spaghetti. Oh, spaghetti. Or like noodle. fettuccine, some sort of long noodle that folds easily. Wow. You know what? I would have never thought that. But when you're describing it, I can see it in my head. He is mm-hmm. absolutely a wet noodle. Yeah. He's weak. He's a weak He's one. weak. Oh, so when the mom and her boyfriend go to drop her off at her dorm room, Tessa meets her roommate for the first time. And her roommate is this older girl, this upperclassman. And the upperclassman goes, oh, my God. You know, at first I was upset that I was getting a freshman roommate. And then I realized I can totally help you. I'm going to help you, like, get fucked up this semester. We're going to go to all the parties. And the mom's like, X fucking cues me. I think that Steph was looking for a reaction because after Tessa comes back upstairs, after she talks her mom off the cliff, Steph was like, how bad did I scare your mom? She was totally, totally looking for. You know what occurred to me is that maybe she was hoping that Tessa would change rooms because she really didn't want a freshman roommate. Yes. Tessa is a little bit of a nerd and I'm kind of here for it. She packs a bunch of books to bring to college. Just hang on, girl, because you're not going to have any time to read those books. You'll be real busy this semester. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do you know when it's in her bedroom when she gets back from the showers wearing only her towel? This poor girl, like, she just got to college. It's her first. She just took her first shower. You know, it's so awkward in those community showers. Mm -hmm. She goes back to her room, and there's a boy sitting on her bed reading her book. He's on her bed. And she's like, excuse me, can you can you go? I'm trying to get dressed. And he goes, don't flatter yourself. I'm not looking. Okay, first of all, the accent. Yes, please. Second of all, the attitude. No, thank you. Get the fuck out of my room. I guess he was waiting on Steph, the roommate. Steph comes in and she's like, oh, hey, girl. Like, not even, like, concerned that her roommate is there in a towel and there is a boy that she invited over just, like, laying on her roommate's bed. No, no concern whatsoever. He's friends with the roommates and he's completely not embarrassed that the other girl is Mm -hmm. coming in with a towel on. He's just like, whatever, I'm not even looking at you. What do you got? What do you got under there? Titties? I've seen them before. I've seen titties before. Dude, if a stranger was invading my space like that, Sitting mm-hmm. on my bed, reading my goddamn book. Taste him. I would have tased him right in the eyeball. Right in the eyeball. Mm-hmm. On a side note, yesterday when I was wearing my dress I told you about, Frank's like, hey girl, what you got under that dress? And I was like, body dysmorphia. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So he is reading The Gats- the Great Gatsby. Mm-hmm. Um, which is an acceptable book to read. Yeah, it's not too shabby. So they mention a book twice that is unacceptable we'll get to that later but i have a lot to say about it okay <laughs> yeah, is that their hate rant it, it's one of my hate rants yes okay. there's two cool so steph is like hey tessa do you want to come out with us tonight yeah and then harden has to make some smart ass comment like Shh, can you really see her <laughs> hanging out with us i can't do it listen oh in fiction we have to suspend disbelief for things to work okay 
We've mm-hmm. read books where there have been hundred year old vampires, where there have been shape shifting fairies. Mm-hmm. And and I have accepted that. Mm-hmm. But now our our new challenge is to accept that this boy Harden is incredibly hot. That's a hard one for me. He's not an ugly he's not listen, he's not a bad guy. He looking looks really guy. young. If he looked older, yes. I would be all over it. But he looks extremely young. And it's one of those things that it's like, I feel weird and creepy now. I know. I just miss the 90s where these characters would have been played by 40-something-year-old actors. And I would not have mm-hmm. to feel guilty about being into it. Because um, he looks like a freaking 13-year-old boy. And there is nothing attractive about that to me. He's a baby. I'm sorry, sir. Do you know what a clitoris is? Do you know where to find it? Have you ever seen one before? Do you need me to draw you a map? There is nothing attractive about a little baby face boy. I'm sorry. To be honest, I think most men would probably appreciate that though. <laughs> I know. I'd be like, I'm sorry. Is is there a map? I feel like Moses is in the desert for her whole lives. <laughs> I didn't know there was a map. It's like a day later and Steph comes up to Tessa in the library and was like, get your stuff. We're going out tonight. You're in the library reading books? Do you think you're paying like $10,000 a year to read books? Are you kidding me? You're doing, you're paying that money to shake your ass and drink at a random stuffy guy's apartment. Let's go. You're paying all that money for the experience of getting drunk at a stranger's house and trying to walk home. Let's go. Let's go. So Tessa goes to her first college party and oh, who's there but our mysterious, um, what's the, what's the word? Somebody that breaks into your house. Burglar? Intruder. <laughs> oh, yes. Our mysterious intruder who was reading a book on her bed mm-hmm. and uh, intruding on her space. He's there. Yeah, he's there. And there's also like a girl basically on Harden's lap. Yeah, we learned later that they're not together, but it just you just kind of assume that they are. She definitely has a giant lady voter for Harden. Mm-hmm. Steph introduces Tessa to everybody. It is my literal nightmare. It's a bunch of people with nothing to talk about. Mm-hmm. So instead they play a game of truth and the, truth or dare. Tessa picks truth first. Molly goes, where's the weirdest place you've had sex? Tessa just says pass. Yeah. And one of the other people in the group says, that's not how this works. And Tessa just goes, fine, dare. And Molly's like, oh my God, we got a virgin on our hands, guys. You know what? Stop mocking people for not having had sex yet when they're 18 fucking years old. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's totally fine. And it's fine Mm -hmm. to be a virgin in your 20s as well. Not that I was. I sure as fuck wasn't, but. (laughs) I was not either. But I'm just saying. And she's like, pass, dare. Yeah, so she she picks dare. And ooh, did she make a mistake? She did. The guy who, just some random guy in the crowd, like in the group. He says, I dare you to make out with Harden. A couple of people start recording because Harden mm-hmm. immediately gets up like like he likes the dare. And he gets up. He starts walking towards her like, come on, let's do this. It's a dare. And Tessa's like, no way. Like, yeah, she looks him dead in the face. And he says, are we doing this? And she says, I'm done playing this game. And then she just walks away like a fucking queen. I love that. The pressure was there. She was around these people that she wanted to impress. She's new to the school. She's at her first party. They're tr- they first of all they mocked her for being a virgin, made her feel mm-hmm. uncomfortable there. Then try to dare her to kissing this guy that I think on some level she does want to kiss, but she's rejecting the idea that she has to kiss him because they're daring her to. And I love her for that. Mm-hmm. Walk away. I do. I love how she just, she didn't argue. She wasn't loud. She wasn't dramatic. She just says, I think I'm done playing this game and just fucking walks away. She leaves and she calls her boyfriend. She's like outside of the house. She calls him. Just She's looking for comfort. She's looking she for, is, yeah. she's looking for some, something familiar. And she calls Noah. Limp Noodle has the audacity to be like, where are you? I hear music. Are you at a party? Wet Noodle is sort of like, 
oh, what, you go to, you're at college now and you go to parties and you drink? Like, who are you? He's, he's giving her a guilt trip because she went to her first college party. Tessa goes upstairs and she wanders into this bedroom that is full of books. She goes into this room and she picks up Wuthering Heights. We're going to have to bear with me for a minute, okay? Oh, God. Do you have Wither Wuthering Heights? No, I don't own a copy of Wuthering Heights. I hate Wuthering Heights. Like, when I say that I hate Wuthering Heights, yeah. I mean the fiery, ragey pits of hell. I fucking hate Wuthering Heights. Wuthering Heights is not a romantic book that, quote, whatever his soul is made of, his and mine are the same. Yeah. No, no. No, no. That's trauma, baby. Your souls are made of trauma. You guys are codependent. Okay. Listen, okay? No. The biggest fucking thing here is that my favorite perfume, it's called Whisper Your Bitter Things, is actually based on Wuthering Heights. And I have to shove that out of my brain oh, wow. every time I wear it because I love it so fucking much. You smell like a traumatic ghost story. I smell like childhood trauma and codependency. <laughs> I, that's why you like it, because it reminds you. Anyways, so <clears throat> stepping off my soapbox regarding Wuthering Heights mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how it's awful and Bronte died of shame after writing it. Wow. Hey, Courtney, um, you're going to be hearing from the, from the estate, from the Bronte estate. For Good fight me. Fight me, the uh, estate of Bronte. Please do it. Okay. Um, Courtney is not affiliated with Fiction Fixation Podcast. Her views are only her own. This is now a Wuthering Heights hate podcast. I like how we're like, hey, we're not going to give ratings. We're not interested in saying if a book or a movie is good or bad. We just want to experience <laughs> it. And you're like, fuck that. Wuthering Heights is trash. <laughs> <clears throat> off my soapbox and then Hardy comes in and he's like what are you doing in my room oh no did I just wander into a random room with a British flag who do I know who's the only person on campus that just happens to have a British accent oh Harden, the guy with the weird red flaggy name he comes up to her and he like takes the book from her hand he quotes it. Yeah. This is my first red flag from Harden is that he quotes Wuthering Heights throw the whole boy away <laughs> Listen, you need to take Harden, you need to put him in rice, and just let just let the rice soak up. If he does not spark the joy, it's time to eat the boy. Okay? <laughs> he does not spark joy in me right now. He just quit Wuthering Heights. He is defective. It's time to throw the whole boy away. I mean, I understand that the context of the quote is bad, but it is a cute quote. Whatever his soul is made of minus the same is that what it is whatever his soul is made of his and mine are the same rose is not affiliated with fiction <laughs> fixation her views are her own she does not stand withering heights or bronte anyways so he would quote it withering heights then he's like are we still playing he catches her hand and then he leans in he and leans all so close so close and then she's like i have to go i'm sorry let's uh remember that tessa has a whole boyfriend sure he's a limp noodle but he is still her boyfriend noah texts tessa on the way home mm -hmm. And he's still kind of upset yeah. that she was at this party. I don't know if we said this, but Tessa's boyfriend stayed back home because he's still in high school. She yes. went off to college without him. I'm sorry, sir. Sit down. Sit down. Let her enjoy her college life. I was the one left behind, so I'm kind of like, yeah, be mad. <laughs> Makes sense. She should be in her room reading books or thinking about you. Yes. <laughs> Nothing else. So the next day, Tessa is in class. Mm -hmm. Landon, the friend she meets on the first day, he is there as well. It's an English literature class. And Tardin is obviously also in this class. Yeah. The teacher asks him, you know, what do you think of Jane Austen's greatest work, you know, Pride and Prejudice? Tardin says that Elizabeth Bennet needs to chill. He says that she essentially threw herself at Darcy. He was being a troll. 
he was being a troll and he knows it. Like Tessa and Harden get into a little argument in the middle of yes. literature class where he's arguing that Elizabeth Bennett wanted Mr. Darcy because he was an asshole and that she was actually desperate and was throwing herself at him. Mm -hmm. And Tessa's like, uh, excuse me, no, she wasn't. It's It was a feminist book about how she had the audacity to reject him, even though society said that she should be groveling over him. So they have two very opposing point of views. I mean, well, one is right and the other is wrong. <laughs> After they leave class... Harden comes up to Tessa and makes a comment about he comes how out, he's like that was cute right we were like fighting in class about a feminist book and she's like fuck all the <laughs> way off you motherfucker and then Landon drops the bombshell that his yeah. mom is currently dating Harden's dad she learns that Harden and Landon Tessa's friend are actually have a very strong uh family connection in that they are practically stepbrothers it's also kind of made clear that they don't really get along they're not close they're not close and Landon hints that there's some dissent between Hardin and his father okay Tessa and Hardin the the hot guy like they're gonna see each other around campus right because they're both students at this college and it's so funny because she keeps running into him she keeps seeing him in different places and at one point, he's sitting in a coffee shop with a leather jacket on, reading a book. Like, I'm sorry, what? Are you are you out doing a photo shoot for some sort of Vogue spread? Like, what is going on? His outfit is just like, like he's an Instagram like influencer. I don't understand. Yes. And so she sees him at a coffee shop and he's like, hey, listen, let's I feel like we got off to a bad start. Let's start over. You know, let this be the first time we're meeting. Like, let this be our beginning. And, of course, with that British accent and that leather jacket, she's like, okay. And so Harden takes Tessa to his special place. Girl, what the fuck was this? Like, he goes, hey, let's start over. Let's be friends. She's like, okay. He's like, hey, I want to show you something. And she's like, cool. I thought he was going like, to take her outside and like say, like, hey, Look at this bench I like to sit on. Something local, something close by. No, he no. gets in the car. He gets her into the car. And then they drive. And they go to the woods. And they get out of the car. And they walk through the woods. And he's like, it's right through here. Full stop. Just let's let's pause right there. You, sir, who I barely know, are not walking me through the woods. That's how you get murdered. See, I don't go to the woods. Um, yeah. under like almost any circumstance i don't camp i don't hike um this would have been a huge red flag for me however i don't know tessa's background fully so like sure like okay if you want to go camp and hike like i guess so they get to this lake and Hardin just starts stripping down yeah to his skivvies and just jumps in the water. It's kind of a romantic little spot. So that's what he wanted to show her. He wanted to show her this lake with a little, mm -hmm. little deck. Uh, not deck. What is it called? A little dock. You know, it's yes. very Dawson's Creek. You know? You remember Dawson's Creek? I've never seen Dawson's oh, Creek. Oh, stop. You need to go watch Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek informed my personality. I am very easily influenced. Like in the past two years, I am. my personality is 82% the podcasts I listen to. And when in the 90s, my personality was 95% Dawson's Creek, for sure. So I, if I get really sucked into like a TV show or a book, my personality tends on, tends to take on aspects of that media. Um, when yeah. I was watching Peaky Blinders, it was really a problem. What is that? Peaky Blinders is about 1920s Irish gangsters. Ooh. It, it is amazing. That's so you. When I when I see you, I think Irish gangster. Thank you. <laughs> and so... You watch New Girl? Yes. Oh, my God. Okay, Frank and I both watch New Girl. It is amazing. If I had to compare my husband to one fictional character, it would be Nick. It would be Nick Miller. Mm -hmm. Why is that my type? Why is Nick Miller <laughs> from New Girl my type? Just the grumpy curmudgeon, you know, doesn't care about his looks, what he's wearing. Just rough. That's my type. 
<laughs> Zoe Deschanel's character in New Girl is like my spirit animal. Yeah. She is who like I strive to be in yeah. life. Same. Same. I also often like since I started what since I watched New Girl, now I'll just start randomly like singing things like it's time to do the dishes. Yes. Yeah. Um that's mental illness, Courtney. That's mental illness. It's fine. <laughs> that's what the Lexapro is for. Uh, I might need to talk to my doctor about in that dose. Yeah. It's fine. I'm only on 10. I have room to grow. Um, <laughs> you have room to spread your wings. <laughs> I believe in you. Tessa and Harden are at this lake. He jumps in in his underwear. She jumps in wearing his T-shirt. He asks her to go underwater. And he says, I want you to hear this. And they go underwater. And then they come back up. And she's a little confused. And he's like, did you hear that? It's nothing. It's really quiet. It's peaceful. Yes. I don't know. Like something just flitters past his eye. And you get this hint that he's battling demons. And that was the first time in the whole movie that I was like, tell me more. I feel like Tessa started to catch feelings for Harden. Yeah. She started catching feelings with that almost kiss. I think, you know, for me, it's just like straight to jail. Straight to jail. She's cheating. Yes, I completely agree. I mean, she was attracted to him from the moment that he was invading her personal space um, and refusing to leave the room when she needed to get dressed and she was in a towel. Mm -hmm. So that's where it started. Yes. It started with a red flag and she just started collecting those red flags and she made this little, this little beautiful wreath. And now she's, uh, yeah, she's really into him. Mm -hmm. You know, they have kind of a steamy moment at the lake and they kiss. She starts hyperventilating. Yeah. Like she freaks out. And he literally says, have you never been touched before? But he says it in a British accent, so it sounds really sexy. Have you never been touched before? Have you never been touched before? Harry, did you put your name in the government of fire? Um, spoiler, he didn't. So Tessa, having, you know, after having had this encounter with Harden, she tells him, uh, listen, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell Noah about us, you know, I'm gonna tell him, remember Noah is her boyfriend. And yes. She, a boyfriend who she just cheated on. And Harden is like, tell him what? He's like, there is no us. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't date, mm -hmm. you know? I might have just rocked your world with that kiss, but you need to get over it, honey. Like, I think everyone could tell that that was sort of like a defense mechanism from Harden's point of view. However, your words also hold weight. So yeah. whether you completely mean them or not, yep. you said what you said. Your actions have consequences, whether or not you intend them to have consequences. Mm -hmm. And when you're playing with someone's feelings and you're saying, I don't date. Well, cool, bro. Get out of my face. Don't take me to your special place. Don't kiss me. You're, he's not going to buy the cow when he's getting all the, all the cow tit for free. Come on. He's getting all the cow titty. <laughs> They're called udders. Getting all the udders. It just doesn't sound as sexy when I say udders. Noah the Wet Noodle shows up at school with flowers. And Tessa is just like, um, she's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I just had to see you. I had to see you, girl. Um, which is sweet. They go to a party. And he looks hella comfortable at a party. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Were you not just guilt tripping her about going to a college party? Yes. And now your ass is sitting in a fucking party? Um, Tessa and Noah go back to her room. And they're sleeping. And Tessa gets a call from Landon, yeah. her friend, who happens to be Harden's future stepbrother. So Tessa's boyfriend is sleeping over. And she leaves him in the middle of the night to go to her friend Landon's house. Mm -hmm. Just leaves boyfriend sleeping. Mm -hmm. And when she gets there, the place is a mess. It is trashed. And not only is the house trashed, so is Harden. It's just such a red flag to me. She comes, she goes over there and there's broken glass everywhere because mm -hmm. Harden lost his temper. I'm sorry, are you a toddler? I, there is no excuse for you breaking shit around your house because you're upset. Are you kidding me? And then he's yeah. out back drinking straight out of a bottle. And then when, mm -hmm. when Tessa's like, hey, dude, I think you've had enough. He throws the bottle at her feet and it breaks at her feet. She goes to pick up the glass and she gets cut, obviously. Then Harden's patching her up. 
They go back to his room and they end up kissing and making out. He takes her pants off. He takes his shirt off. For a second, I think that they had sex, but they just did hand stuff, didn't they? They just did hand stuff. I don't know. <laughs> his face was out of the frame for a minute, so maybe he did some mouth stuff. I don't know. Mm-hmm. He did some nose stuff. <laughs> he does. He did some chin stuff, girl. We don't know. Nose, chin. I don't know what goes on in England. So, <laughs> obviously, they fool around a little bit. And then Tessa falls asleep in his bed with him. Forgetting her boyfriend that she left at her dorm. Can we just say at this point, she's a shitty-ass girlfriend. Like, I yes. like her, but she's a shitty-ass girlfriend. I'm just saying that if I were Noah... And I wake up and my girlfriend, who I know has been going to parties, is gone. Like, that's super sus. What what does sus mean, girl? Sus is short for suspicious. But you're supposed to give us, like, the official definition. Don't be lazy about it. Sus. Let's look it up. Sus is an adjective. A term used to describe suspicious, but a bit more lit. Sus. Is short for suspicious. Yeah. It's just like the cool way to say suspicious. Not sauce like like tomato sauce. But you rather... put on wet noodles. No. S U S sus. So, so major. Sus. So Noah is like, this is really sus. My girlfriend is missing. Tessa wakes up in Hardin's bed, sees that she has seven missed calls from Noah. Seven. Seven. And then she she rides her bike back to her dorm room. She pe- she pedals really thick. Can you imagine her panic pedaling <laughs> to get back to her boyfriend before he wakes up so he yes. doesn't realize she's gone? But he's awake. He's sitting out front and he's like, hey, babe, where have you been? I've been worried. And then he sees Harden, like fucking just like step out from a tree behind her. He just walks out from the shadows just silently. Yes. Implying like, something. How did Harden get there? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Like, that's I a know, bit that sus. Yeah. Noah, who is not dumb, puts two and two together. Yeah. And it's just like, I'm out. He's like, something happened between you guys. And she's like, wait, Noah, it's not what you think. And I'm like, isn't it though? Isn't it? I think it is. I think it's yeah. exactly what he thinks. It's ex- it, it, it is exactly what he thinks. Um, and then she's like, Noah, I've been wanting to talk to you about this for a while. Like, I'm confused. <laughs> and Noah's just like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. I mean, but Noah's too nice to say that. So mm-hmm. he just gets in his car and leaves. Bye, Noah. Bye, wet noodle. Poor wet noodles. I love carbs. <laughs> May you find your mozzarella sauce one day. <laughs> Marinara marinara sauce <laughs> and then Harden's like hey and she's like go away Harden and she actually she ghosts him for a minute now Tessa's sad she just broke up with her boyfriend because of Harden and Harden yes. tries to make her feel better by having her stay past hours at the library so he can read to her on the floor and I'm like I kind of like it I think it was really freaking cute it was cute. They're like little criminals together reading at the on the floor of the library. And the security guard yes. finds them and chases them out. And you know that poor guy doesn't get paid enough for this bullshit. Yes. And then we all love a good montage. There's like this cute little like date montage yeah. of like a couple other different dates. They're, they just start going on dates and, and they're kind of a thing now. And they're doing, they're getting handsy. They're doing lots of things. They're getting really handsy. They're getting so handsy that they are actually in Tessa's bedroom in her dorm room. And they're folding around. She's unzipping his pants. He has his shirt off. And then her mom walks in. Her mom walks in. Her mom is pissed. Her mom is like, is this what you've been doing the whole time? You know, just climbing on top of boys. Mom flips out totally. She's like, no. This is not going to happen. You are going to break up with that boy and focus on your school. Tessa, you know, reasonably is like, mom, this is my life and you're going to have to let me live it. Yeah. And mom gives her an ultimatum. She says, you either break up with him or you're cut off. And Tessa chooses to be cut off. She's like, I choose the dick, which she hasn't had yet. 
but she imagines it would yes. be worth losing her boyfriend and family over. So Hardin comes and gets her one day and takes her to this apartment. And he's like, this is actually a friend of my dad's house. I'm watering the plants. This is ours for the rest of the year. We can stay here together. He says, when I heard your mother was cutting you off, I had to do something for you. And she said, you did this for me? And I'm just like, did what? Like, what did he do? He offered to water a lady's plants for a year. And now he's going to crash at her house probably without her knowing. Because I'm pretty sure that lady did not sign up to have two teenagers, you know, bumping uglies on her couch. And she has a really nice ha- apartment, too. Yeah. But yeah, so basically Tessa and Hardin are now going to essentially live together in this apartment mm-hmm. because the lady is out of the country for the year and she doesn't know any better. So Cue another cute date montage. Sure, 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 sure. Listen, I I love a good montage like everybody else, but the music was mournful and... It was, like, sexual. Frank heard it and he said, they're bumping uglies, aren't they? (laughs) And I'm like, no, they're having a picnic in the park. (laughs) So then we end up at Dad's wedding. So Hardin doesn't want to go. It's clear that Tessa sort of convinced him that he should go to his dad's wedding reception. And they get there and Landon greets them. And he's like, hey, I'm really glad you guys came. You can tell there's a lot of tension between Hardin and Landon. The reluctant brothers. Yes. Hardin doesn't have, he doesn't have a good relationship with his father. Yes. His dad was a drunk. He used to go out and drink a lot. And one night, some guys that Hardin's daddy pissed off showed up at their house. They couldn't find his dad, so they beat his mom up instead. Hardin tried to stop them. And he got beat up, too. Uh Uh-huh. So the kid and the mom get beat up just because the dad pissed off the wrong people. You know what? That's so sad. That's so sad. Moving on. (laughs) Um, Then Hardin and Tessa dance at the wedding, and then they go back to their apartment. And then, <laughs> what's the sound? You always do it better. <laughs> they do the dirty. Yeah, it's 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 whatever. He's like a kid. He's trying really hard to be sexy. I just want him to go do his homework. Like I don't know what he's doing. Put your pants on and go do your homework. They're full on together at this point because if you if you missed it, it's because you blinked. But he obviously changed his mind about relationships and he had one with her because they're, yes. they're obviously together. But yeah, so uh, there's this montage of them dating and being together and it's cute. Um, yes. But all good things must come to an end. And this ends pretty much the way a lot of relationships end. when. She looks at his phone. She's reading a book on the couch. I guess he's in the bathroom or he's doing something. He's not in the room. And his phone is just buzzing, 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 buzzing. So she gets up and she looks at it. And it's Molly, um, Lady Boater Bitch. Molly is texting him and is like, have you told her yet? If you don't, I will. So that's a little sus. That is definitely sus. I I would have some questions. I definitely follow up questions for sure. And Tessa does have follow up questions. She tries to ask him. She tries to ask mm-hmm. Harden, hey, uh, these messages about you hiding something from me, what do they mean? And he's like, nothing. And he locks it. And she's like, well, tell me what's going on. He's like, do you trust me? She's like, yeah, I trust you. He's like, so don't worry about it. And I'm like, that's like literally not how trust works. Yeah, and, th- and then he leaves. She can't find him, right? He like disappears. Yeah, he like disappears. She can't get a hold of him. And she's texting him. She's calling him. Like he's not answering the phone. Red flag. Red flag. Yes, red flag. And then Tessa gets a text from a mutual friend of theirs that says, if you want to know what Harden is, meet me at this place. It's like a little diner or something. Yeah, it's at the same bar diner thing that they kind of all tend to kind of hang out at. So, of course, she's like, fuck it. Full <laughs> send. Let's go. Let's so go. she goes and she sees Harden's car there. Tessa heads inside the bar 
and Harden's not there. However, Molly, Lady Butter, and yeah. then Steph, roommate, roommate, who we haven't seen in a hot minute. Yeah, she's there. They're, they're both there. It's building up to a confrontation. It's very obvious that Molly, Lady Boner, who really wants Harden, she mm-hmm. she wants she wants Tessa to know something, and she, and she's about to make a revelation. Yes, but before she makes a revelation, Harden has to be there, and so then the same person who lured Tessa to this place also just walks in with Harden, like, "Hey, look who I found." Yeah. So Tessa obviously knows something's going on and she's putting two and two together, but she's putting it together the wrong way. She's like, oh, so Harden, you're you're messing around with with this Molly chick. Is that what's going Mm -hmm. on? And Molly's like, no, 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 that's not what's going on. I'll show you what's going on. She plays a video. So the video is from that very first night at the frat party after Tessa was dared to make out with Harden and she turned him down. Yeah. They were all like, ooh, Harden got his very first rejection. Tessa had walked away, so Tessa didn't see the rest of it. Yeah. He's like, you know what? I can do one better. I can make her fall in love with me. And yeah. then I can just turn it off. Yeah. Because that's how feelings work. Yeah, yeah, totally. Girl, Tessa's daddy issues flared up like a bad case of eczema. Yes. Like, she just got emotional eczema all over her body. And she freaked out and she was like, what is this? And he's like, no, it was before, 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 Mm -hmm. you know, I got to know you. It was different. And she and yeah, she had told him once nothing could change the way I feel about you. And he tried to remind her of that. It's like, hey, forget this video that makes me look like an asshole, even though it's who I am. Mm -hmm. You said nothing could make you change how you feel about me. And she said, why then I guess I lied too." Dude, could you imagine her humiliation and just like, oh, my God. Because she fell for him, even though she didn't want to. She kind of alienated first her boyfriend, who she cheated on for him. And she had Mm -hmm. been with that kid, the the wet noodle. She had been with him her whole life. So she lost someone very significant when Mm -hmm. she kissed um, Harden. And then her mom cut her off because of her relationship with Harden. And for her to learn that it was all like a bet. She was pissed. Yeah. I just, but don't you think it should just be a rule that if you're in college and a really hot guy tries to seduce you, rule of thumb is it's a bet. Just seems like a theme. It does (laughs) seem like a theme. But could you imagine if, like, what if it wasn't a bet? Like, could you imagine that? What what would he have to do to convince you that he was, like, legit? Yeah, I don't know. Let's go to Vegas and get married. Yeah. If you're really in love with me, let's get married. Put a baby inside of me right now. (laughs) Deposit a baby into me. It's the, it's the baby bank. Make a deposit into the baby bank. We'll make, We'll wait three to four <laughs> weeks and we'll see. We'll see if your check clears. <laughs> we'll see if your check clears. So immediately after this whole monstrosity of a situation, Tessa takes the bus back, t- back home and just goes to her mom's house and just like stands on the front porch and rings the doorbell. Yeah, her mom said she would get her heart broken. Here you are, honey bun. And then her and mom reconcile. And then Tessa actually goes to Wet Noodle and she apologizes. Yeah, and it's funny because he's just not that mad at it anymore. He's Mm -mm. like, hey, I knew you were out of my league, man. I was just fucking with I was just pulling your leg. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Yeah, he's just like, yeah, it was good while it lasted. Like, I knew it was going to end. So we're good. Girl, so she essentially has this breakup with Harden and her life just starts flourishing. She makes up with her old friends. She makes up with her mom. She applies for a job. Bestie, I'm scared to tell you this, but when you break up with a boy and your life suddenly gets better, that was the wrong boy. Yes. That was the wrong boy. That's a rough truth that I think we all have to learn once in our life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she does. She starts flourishing and it's finals time. She is in her English literature class, the one where she got in the huge argument with Harden regarding Pride and Prejudice. And the instructor after class comes up to her and gives her a big envelope and is like, this is for you. It's Harden's paper. 
it's okay. Can you imagine your your English teacher, your English professor giving a paper that you wrote to your crush or your signif or your ex? Oh my god! I think there needs to be some sort of HIPAA laws that apply to English papers because I've put some <laughs> shit in English papers that I don't want anyone to ever read. No, I I have to. Like, there's some things that I have turned in for papers that I'm like, okay, I hope nobody sees this because I would be like mortified. The English professor gives. Tessa Hardin's paper, Hardin's final. It's all about how he didn't believe in love and he thought it only existed in books until he fell in love, until he met his Elizabeth Bennet. Oh, and yeah, he refers to Tessa as his, his Elizabeth Bennet. And we know it's Tessa he's talking about because he included an illustration just in case she was confused. Yeah, <laughs> he included a drawing of her and a drawing of the lake. And then Tessa ends up at the lake sitting on the dock looking out at the water as she's reading the paper then Hardin just comes strolling down and sits next to her well because one of the last things that it says on the paper was you once asked me who I love the most in this world mm -hmm. and my answer is you so essentially he told her he loved her for the first time in an English paper that he turned in as his final. And mm -hmm. it's just a total coincidence that the teacher decided to actually give it to her. Yes. So I don't know, but I don't think that counts, girl. I don't think that counts. No, that does not count. Like, can you imagine someone... He didn't say it. Yeah. Can you imagine someone telling you that they love you for the first time, but like whispering it to someone like three towns over and then just being like, I did it. Yeah. Like, no, I... That doesn't count. He needs to say it out loud. But mm -hmm. that's that's... That's where they leave us here, is that they're just sitting on the dock together. We are left with the promise of love. and But you know what? We're also left with a whole lot of daddy issues. Because she's, oh she's got daddy issues. He's got daddy issues. I don't know, man. Those daddy issues, man, they linger. Yeah, they are both. We don't, we don't have closure here. We don't. They, do they get back together? Yeah. I think it's really hard to come back from the insinuation that the person that you're in love with was just pretending the whole time that they made the decision like, hey, I'm going to fake a fake fall in love with this girl so that she falls in love with me. And then I win a bet. That's hard to come back from. Ask any 90s movie. I want to believe that they kind of learned a valuable lesson from each other and then went on their separate ways. I don't want them together. Like, just move on. He's got, yes. like, his anger issues and breaking things and stuff. Like, here's the thing, right? He's obviously good to her in, in the sense that he's considerate of her boundaries and he asks her if she's okay and, you know, yeah. he doesn't push himself on her. That's great. But that's who he's trying to be. Who he really is is the way he is with people he's not trying to impress. Like his mm -hmm. stepbrother where he's breaking shit at his house. That's who he really is. Yes. So how long until he stops trying to impress you? It's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yes. It's a little sus that he likes to break shit and punch people. That's all I'm going to say. All right, guys. As always, thank you for listening. Please feel free to check out our show notes for information regarding the books and movies we discuss. If you liked our podcast, please leave a review and share with a friend. We'll see you next week. Don't be sus. Don't be sus. Just don't do it. Don't be sus.